This is gonna get really ugly really fast here. 2013 will go down on record as the fewest amount of tornadoes ever recorded in a year since we began attempting to jot them all down. One of these was the largest tornado ever recorded at 2.6 miles wide and was the first to claim the lives of several storm chasers. The following video is the leaner cut of the 18 twisters I witnessed this year in chronological order starting with two of the smallest tornadoes early in the season that were responsible for the upheaval of several dead leaves. Man, this thing has got a tornado. There she is. Starting to whirl right there. Wow, look at that. Prairie dog farts are bigger than that. It wasn't until mid-May that Mother Nature finally awoke from her cold hangover and on the wrong side of the bed. Chasing May 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th would yield photogenic tornadoes four days in a row, each stronger than the last. All right, so the last three days we've seen tornadoes every single day, and today's another big day in Oklahoma. I'm in Tulsa right now on my way towards Oklahoma City, but I'm never going to get there because these guys are in the road. I'm having to pull over and rescue them. By the way, these are box turtles. They're called box turtles because they have a hinge on their shell, and they can completely close off their shells. You can't get in there. Are you coming out, little guy? Look, little guy's all brave. He's gonna come out. Anyway, we're gonna let him go here. There's a little pond close by, and then we're gonna get on to our destination and maybe see some tornadoes today. Free! All right, turtles, you're now free. Hope you're not allergic to poison ivy. tornadoes that touched down on May 20th reached EF5 status and ripped a mile-wide path of devastation through Moore, Oklahoma, ending the lives of 24 people, many of those children, and injuring almost 400 others. A hundred people were rescued from rubble and 11 days later a tornado more than twice this one's size would touch down less than 30 miles from this location and go on record as the widest tornado ever recorded. goes. Look at that. Oh my god. Man, this is ugly. Holy hell. At this point, the tornado is near peak width. 
giant subvortices dangling around its perimeter were deceitful to many, believing they were the bulk of the threat. However, the much bigger picture was a grossly distorted monster creating an unimaginable swath of tornado force winds. The strongest tornadoes with wind measurements over 200 miles per hour earn a rare EF5 rating. A Doppler radar positioned nearby measured winds in excess of 296 miles per hour, currently the second highest winds ever measured worldwide. National Weather Service policy for determining EF ratings, however, is based on surveys of ground damage. And because this tornado meandered through rural areas and did not impact many structures, it was only given an EF3 rating. So basically, if the core of a tornado harboring winds over 200 miles per hour doesn't impact any structures, but its outer bands knock down the lawn chair you left out at the fishing hole, that tornado is an EF0. This tornado took the lives of 8 people and injured 115. A combination of early warnings and the tornado's path through mostly open terrain kept casualties surprisingly low. A bullet was dodged. Still, many people's lives were turned upside down by this freak of nature. It even left a scar on the earth, visible from space. There's a tornado in there. I need to call that in. After teasing me for hours, this storm finally decided to drop a ropey tornado in the one part of the county with blocking trees. But while chasing out here, it's not all about bagging scary tornadoes. If there are no supercells, there's a good chance for mind-blowing electric storms to marvel. If there are no storms at all, there is an ocean of majesty, scenery, captivating wildlife, and interesting folks to meet. This is Masha from Chelyabinsk, Russia. While driving through the Badlands, she told me a dramatic story about a meter she witnessed explode in her hometown, knocking out her windows. I thought it was extreme that meters explode in Russia, here they just give you a parking ticket. When I realized she was trying to say meteor, the story made more sense. I think much more better. While trying to snag a picture of a historic landmark, I drove through this field, which turned out to be this guy's crops. I was hoofing it up a fence line when he rode up and said, Howdy, Texan. I said, Howdy. How'd you know I was from Texas? He said, Because Texans can't drive worth a sh. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's chauffeuring me up his property to photograph chimney rock from an angle you can't get without his permission and teaching me how to light a cigar in the strong prairie winds. Turn your back to the wind. Get the circle in there. All right. Work. Yep. And I showed him how to burn a hole into the back of your Nikon screen while trying to take a picture with a cigar in your mouth. Drop this camera. <laughs> Gordon told me awesome stories about the tough times on the Oregon Trail, covered wagon trains and people eating people. Out here on the prairies there was no trees, so that's why they gathered the buffalo chips for their campfires to cook over. So they say, how you know where those cow chips or buffalo chips? I said, well, you have to taste them to know. <laughs> Give me another cigar out there. You have to add a little bullshit to fun, that's all there is to it. For 30 years, Gordon directed covered wagon train reenactments down the Oregon Trail. And odds are you've seen him on TV or heard his voice on a documentary. Cactus, he probably got him in Texas, too. Of course, that would be bigger than <laughs> I can only hope I'm as cool and tough as Gordon when I'm 60. Oh, yeah. And by the way, he's 80. The hell have I got myself into today? Thank <laughs> you.
Well, friends, it was an amazing year, and I appreciate you following along. I'm going to wrap up this documentary with a few late-season tornado clips. If you'd like to see more in-depth footage of any of these tornadic events, including the El Reno monster with radar and commentary, you'll find them on this channel. I'll put up a brief subscribe link at the end of this video. Hope you're quick on the draw. You're too slow. <laughs> this storm chase was sponsored by Velvet Slipper Radio, powered by the Radio Agogo Radio Network.